This is Rob Johnson from the Rare Species Fund. I'm here at the Tigers Preserve in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Now the Rare Species Fund participates in wildlife conservation projects all over the world. Now one of our favorite ways to contribute is to talk to the researchers who are doing the work and find out the equipment that they need and they cannot necessarily get in the field. So as you can see here, we've got all kinds of scientific equipment. There's more than 2,000 different test tubes for samples. Um, there's a laptop computer, there's cameras, uh, there's a mixer for those test tubes, and you know, you can do something as easy and simple as getting little light bulbs. Those are for the uh, microscopes. And it doesn't matter if it's two or three dollars, if you're out in the middle of the jungle and you can't get it, you can't do your work. So we have all of this equipment that the Rare Species Fund is contributing, uh, and we're actually getting ready to pack it up. We are gonna fly to Uganda, and we are gonna work with an organization that is helping to save one of the last populations of wild mountain gorillas. As you can imagine, there is no direct flight to get from South Carolina to the jungles of Uganda. It is gonna be a very long, arduous journey. Um, in the past two days, I've already taken two flights, one from South Carolina uh, to New York City, and then about a 16-hour flight from New York to South Africa. And actually, that's where I am right now. I'm sitting at the Johannesburg Airport. I'm waiting for my next flight to go to Kigali, Rwanda. Now that I've reached Uganda, it's time to grab the gear and hit the road. My guide Abe is waiting outside with a big four-wheel drive Land Rover. We've got about a two and a half hour journey to the border of Uganda, and from there, it's about six hours of very hard roads. We're gonna be making our way through the windy, impenetrable National Park. The name Impenetrable Forest is very appropriate. This place has some of the steepest slopes with some of the densest vegetation on the planet. It has taken us more than three and a half hours to drive only about 45 miles. The roads offer a very bumpy ride to say the least, but we're making our way very slowly and shortly we'll be arriving in the village of Buhoma, which is where we find the research station for conservation through public health, or CTPH. This is the Gorilla Conservation Group that we're working with and we will be dropping the gear off to. Before I meet with Steven Rubanga, the co-founder of CTPH, I want to get a first-hand idea of what all of the work is about. I'm scheduled to meet with some Ugandan Wildlife Authority officials at the Bwindi National Park headquarters. From there, we will travel with the rangers into the impenetrable forest to see in person some of the world's last remaining mountain gorillas. Finding the gorillas is not always an easy task and can require a healthy amount of stamina. Gorilla movements are far from predictable and rely heavily on their pursuit of food. In order to find the gorillas, the Ugandan Wildlife Authority employs the assistance of trackers. Using their expert forest knowledge, these trackers are able to discover the new position of the gorilla family. Staying in radio contact, our group meets up with the trackers in time to find the gorillas enjoying a tasty lunch. Mountain gorillas are the largest of all the gorillas and the most endangered. Currently, only about 800 mountain gorillas exist and they can only be found in three different countries. Rwanda, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Over the years, all of these countries have experienced widespread war and the destruction of much of their local wildlife. While the political situation in the Congo is still a bit tenuous, the governmental stability of both Rwanda and Uganda has helped save the mountain gorilla 
and the unique habitats they need to survive. One of the biggest factors in contributing to the protection of mountain gorillas is their value in tourism. The tourist permit to even set foot into gorilla territory ranges from 500 to 750 US dollars per person per day. These fees not only help keep and protect the integrities of the national park, they help employ local villagers and they contribute up to 20% to community betterment projects. All of this equates to one thing, protecting the gorillas. Now this approach has been so successful that not only is the mountain gorilla population not in decline, we're seeing a very slow but very steady increase in gorilla numbers. Seeing these gorillas firsthand is a very humbling and an awe-inspiring experience. And it gives me a better idea of exactly what it is that we're trying so hard to protect. For now though, it's time to make our descent back to the base of the mountain to meet with CTPH officials and learn how the Rare Species Fund can help in this very important conservation effort. So we're riding along with Stephen. We're going to the CTPH Field Center. We're going to go see all the good work that they're doing with the gorillas and with the local people, the local villages. So I've made it to Gwindi, I've made it to Uganda, and I've met with Stephen here from CTPH, and we're so very excited to get this equipment all the way from America and get it into this man's hands. We've got a lot of great work that's going to happen. Yes, thank you very much, um, Robert Dotson, for your care, for your commitment. We thought what we were talking with you on email was not going to materialize the same I've seen it right now. You have not known me, but we knew ourselves in the mist. In the mist. But right now I can see the real Robert. Johnson, who traveled all long way from the state to Uganda, and particularly to Gwindi, and is here with us at Gorilla Research Place. From the rare species, fan, who donated all this fan and brought us all this equipment, and it is going to help to improve our routine work. Stepping into the CTPH Gorilla Research Clinic, I see how much these people care about the gorillas and for their local communities. Because of tourism, we already know that gorillas are finally getting their long-deserved protection from poaching and from habitat eradication. We do see another problem, however. Because of their similarity to humans, gorillas are susceptible to many of the same diseases. If you consider that mountain gorillas are living in close proximity and sharing territory with many low-income villages in one of the poorest countries in the world, we will see that the potential for a disaster is not too far away. This is where conservation through public health steps in. Not only do they monitor the health of the gorillas, they monitor the health of the local people and the health of their livestock. By monitoring the distribution of illness amongst these three groups, CTPH maintains a better understanding of disease communicability and allows them to establish preventative measures ensuring everyone's health and safety. CTPH is a very heavily community-based organization. A large amount of their work involves direct contact with local villagers, educating them about proper hygiene, livestock management, and disease prevention ultimately stopping the problem at the source. We are doing both routine and research, especially with the gorilla we have right now. For the last 10 years, we have collected about six to 7,000 gorilla samples, and we have been analyzing them using microscopically alone. 
for parasites. But right now, with the equipment he has brought, we are going to extend it to protozoa. We want to look at protozoa in, in gorillas, in livestock, and in humans. And we are trying now at this material time, especially with the immunos <coughs> card, start card he has brought for us. We are going to follow up some of the previous steps we did. We want to see if the infection still exists, if they do, at what perimeter. And this is something which we don't want to leave it now, because today we are trying to look at it, what is the wrong? So that more scientists who are going to come after us must get some of this info information, documented, and they continue to follow it. And that is why we are very, very, very much grateful to Robert Johnson from Rare Species Fund, who has managed to get all this fund through the Rare Species Fund and brought us this equipment. This is incredible. Something we have never thought, we never expected, but it is happening. We, in conservation through public health, management and staff, especially in Gorilla Research Clinic, we are very grateful.